juice for the friend zone. It's your time. We giving you real talk, so stay on your grind. We just trying to laugh and have a good time. We dropping them juice so that all our people can shine. Views from the friend zone. It's your time. We giving you real talk, so stay on your grind. We just trying to laugh and have a good time. We dropping them juice so that all our people can shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another edition of Views from the Friend Zone podcast. Happy Sunday, y'all. It's March 26, 2023. A beautiful Sunday here in New York City. It's your boy, Real Talk Mall, who I got in the building with me. It's your boy, Cliff Brock Banam. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Open Shirt Poppy. He couldn't be here today. He had some family obligations, but he's here with us in spirit, and he should be on the next show. So, yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's a crazy spring. The weather's nice outside, you know. Couple of days, yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, First. Me, me, Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, New York got a lot of good energy. Things are happening. Sports. Uh, shout out to uh, Marquise Noel from Harlem. He, he was playing in Kensington State. Five eight mm-hmm. guard was killing them. Mm-hmm. Had thirty points. Even that Kemba vibes. Yeah, thirty points, like ten assists last night. Unfortunately, in a loss. And then um, wait, they waited. Loss was heartbreaking. Yeah, he should have shot it. He should have shot it. And then uh, before that, he had NCAA record. Uh, well, 19 points is not the record, but uh, well, he had 20 points, 19 assists. The 19 assists was yeah, the record. Yeah, that set in the building yeah, supporting him, it was, too. It was a Queens versus Harlem thing because the other guard he was playing against was from Queens. and they, they, oh, for Yeah, yeah. And okay. they, they was playing against each other. Like, they showed, like, Gauchos and, I think, Renz or, like, you know, you know the, the yeah. AU teams. Sort of. Shout out to that. You know what I mean? New York, really big energy. You know what I'm saying? Giants coming off of a great season. The Jets is, you know, he's a Cowboys fan. <laughs> so let me talk my New York stuff. And then, yeah, you know, yeah, do, do whatever, your, but, do you your know, thing, do your I thing. I really want to shout out, like, in New York, you know, the Mets, the Mets is in the building. Mets did some free agent signing. See, Mets got a lot of energy. You know, Yankees doing their thing. You know, the Rangers doing their thing. New York is representing. Takashi got beat up, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> justice has kind of been served. I'm gonna t- we're going to talk more about the Takashi thing right now because that's a joke, like, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not a Takashi 69 fan. I do think how he got done was on some sucker stuff. That was a coward I, move. I, I, I'll, I'll give more explanation than why, but, you know, shout out to New York and New York Energy. Go ahead. Nah, I mean, shout out to the New York Knicks. You didn't even think of your Knicks this yeah, year. The Knicks, no, the Knicks is doing the York, solid. The Knicks were supposed to be part of my... What's up with Julius okay. Randle, though? I think, I think he's... Wild card. He, I think some people say he's on some booger sugar. Yeah, he on something because he the play is there, but he's like it's like he got like anger management problems or something. Big time anger management. Yeah, you know saying, you're trying to fight quickly and quickly. We're just trying to calm down. Like, listen, you're relaxed. Like, yeah, I'm your teammate. Not like you're about to get suspended. You know, so yeah, so and it's, and quickly is a good dude. So that, yeah. that's weird stuff. But like, New York is good energy. You know what I'm saying? The the weather's starting to get nice. So we're not at sundress season yet, which is my favorite. <laughs> Some people like Christmas. <laughs> Sundress season is my favorite season. That's your year. favorite? You know what I mean? Because, you know, being a married man, I can't really partake in thought season. You know, <laughs> thought season and sundress season is not always the same thing, but you know what I'm saying? So, what else is going on? It's uh, Sorry for those who've been, like, you know, checking out, like, yo, when are they going to do their next show? It's been it's been a minute. This is our first show of the year. We already yeah, yeah. March. We're almost yeah. at the end of the first quarter, so a lot of life has been happening, you know what I'm saying, transitions, but, you know... Shout out to uh, Cliff on March 9th. He celebrated his oh, one year one heart year. transplant yeah, yeah. anniversary. Bless him, like. bless him. Yeah. And you see this big brolic dude? <laughs> this look like someone who had a heart transplant. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that shows the dedication, yeah, the hard him. work this man puts in to still look good. Yeah, He still not going to do head off. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> nah. you know what? You know, God is blessed you, man. Peace and, um, peace and just next level yeah. and just keeping my energy safe. And then I'm... I'm thankful because I had some good people around me, uh, my brothers and sisters, and, and you, all of them, all of you. My brothers and sisters came to see me like every day yeah. through the process while I was in the hospital transitioning. And, you know, tomorrow I got my follow up appointment, which is uh, a year appointment, basically, like basically checking. After you do a year of transplant, they do um, a follow up, going over everything, whatever. So basically, like a celebration yeah. until appointment tomorrow. But, you know, it was just because I, I had a good support system. That's why I made it through and stuff. And, you know, I kept God first, regardless. My mom is a prayer warrior, and she always installed that, in yeah. regardless of what. And I'm just thankful. And, and I'm, yeah. I'm so thankful, too, because, you know, that uh, this is this is my, my right hand, left hand, however you want to say it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so thankful that God. Was in his favor, you know what I'm saying? And you know what? Organizations out there, you need to hit this kid up, have him come talk to talk to people. His story 
his mm. his passion, his dedication, his survival tactics is something that you know people need to hear. You know what I'm saying? He's a I'm great thankful. speaker. I know you, you're not officially going out on tours and nah, stuff like that, but nah. I do think I do think your your story is motivational. Your, Definitely. your presence is, is motivational. You know how you dealt with the LVAT for so many years. People didn't even know that you was yeah. moving around like that in yeah. the LVAT, and then now you're a heart years. transplant person. You know what yeah. I mean? And you're a young black man, not even. You years from forty, and you know you dealt with all that trials and tribulations. You're yeah. still here. You're still strong. Still pushing. You yeah. worked in a difficult environment and still held it down. Like it's, it's a story. We, I'm gonna help him write his book. We gonna work <laughs> that all out. You know what I'm saying? But if yeah. organizations would like him to talk, you know, just share his story. You know what I mean? Appreciate it. Hit him up. Hit me up. I'll, I'll help him set that up. He's a busy man, but we'll try to make that nah, work. You know we, nah, saying? listen, not too busy for, for things that, that's important. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned. And also transitioning also, like, you got to make time for what's, what's important. Yeah. I'm just thankful, you know. I just try to keep good people around me, my energy high. Yeah. And then um, just keep your stressful mind, you know, that helps all the time, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm thankful. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's, it's a blessing to uh, be back behind the microphone, blessing to speak to you people. Like, when I I go so long without having a podcast and being able yeah. to talk to you people. It's like I miss sessions of therapy. You know what I'm saying? That's what being able asking. to talk with my brother on this platform, my other brother who's not here, our guests, things of that nature. It's 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 a form of therapy, and I, I also like the people out there to like hear conversations of regular people looking at things the same thing you might look at it. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's not a knock against you know. Uh, the celebrities, uh, I was just talking uh, to the studio owner right before I got on air, and it's just like, you know, the podcast game has been oversaturated with so many celebrities. Yeah, yeah. And I don't blame the celebrities, right? Because now you have a platform, now you have a venue yeah. to speak your vantage point without someone trying to make you look crazy, someone trying to, like, twist your words, athletes are doing it. I was talking earlier that, you know, before it was... You had to wait for like the Barclays and the Shacks and the Kenny Smiths, like the dudes who who's been out of the game already. And they, and since now they're media, I'm not saying that they don't side with the players anymore. But now it always seems like they're taking shots at the players, or like you're not built like the way we was built. And you and, and, and then it kind of creates this thing where it's just like it's attacking today's athletes. But now you got, I'm going to let you, let no, no, go, go, no, go. now you got things like Draymond Green or, or, or Paul George or these other athletes who are doing their podcast now while they're still playing. So you get the pulse of the game and like, or even, even Matt Barnes and, and, and Steven Jackson who, who are hood dudes who, who, who are very articulate, yeah. but they still, they still let you know how it is, how it currently is. And they're not doing it to be like media faces. Go ahead. No, in terms of the um the podcast, it's wonderful that everybody's doing it. But in terms of the players doing it, I I, I think the players doing it while they play, it's a little distraction, a little bit. It's, it's better it's better to do it on the off season or something where whatever, because you you because you because. You might have a, um, a podcast as a player, as an NBA player, football player, whatever, to why you're in season. And the topic might come up a little crazy. And then now, now the whole locker room got to focus on that. Yeah, but. The, I, the I, energy on that. That's what, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is I, I like the fact that everybody can do a, anybody could do a podcast and, 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 you know, and speak about topics and, and, and get good ideas. But I don't, I don't like the fact that players who are actively playing doing the podcast while they're playing. That's just my opinion. No, no, and I don't even let me tell you why I disagree, even though I understand you saying the distraction point. It's gonna be distraction regardless because people are gonna subtweet on Instagram. Yeah, and sure. people are gonna say something spicy back. There's always locker room material. You say a reporter asks you a certain question and they post it up kind of thing. I'd rather my players have podcasts than flashing guns in the strip club. Okay. You know I what get I'm what saying? you're saying. Yeah. Or, 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 or getting caught up with that crazy. Like, to be honest with you, anything that keeps the players engaged on a legal, healthy, you know, expressive way that's just like, you know, I'd, ra I'd rather have my Draymond Greens doing his podcast than my John Morant running around flashing guns. Like, the strip club thing, the strip club thing, do your thing. That, that, have fun things of that nature, but just know we in a day and age. Well, like, I, like mm -hmm. it was the footage that we had was the strip club actually sold the footage. Yeah, for for money. 
for money. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Of so so it's, it's like it's no, but it's, you, it's no fair game anymore. It's no People fair are game. Going to and then you. The, the thing about it is, the, a strip club like that, they sell the folk. They probably they probably got a half a million dollars, maybe two hundred thousand, two fifty for that, right? Yeah. Strip club game ain't the same no more. People with the OnlyFans and stuff, whatever, too. That that hurt everything. You yeah, understand? So. Yeah. Strip club, they look like they see an opportunity like that. They gonna be like, listen, this might cover the year for me. Yeah, that's, you know what I mean? That, that little picture probably covered covered a lot of a lot of, a lot of things going on yeah. in that club. So, so direct to consumer, yeah, is is making everyone fight to like you know, things ain't the same no more. No, it's the not. bags are, are different. Not not people are the bag. Like for instance, like you said, the strip clubs ain't the same no more because some people rather spend money on OnlyFans. Because you know what, on uh, at least OnlyFans, you gonna see it, you gonna you gonna entertain it, whatever. So boom, the strip club's so dangerous right now. Like, look, you go out and you just trying to have a good time, maybe get a lap dance, you know, engage with a, a, a little romance, you know what I mean? Mm, it might for be lady, line up city, whatever. Now, now all of a sudden, you doing something. You might have been doing something outside, like that, to help the community or whatever. Then they gonna post your strip club photo and ruin everything that you got going. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean because you wanted to go to a gentleman's club that you a bad person, yeah. but the opportunity is it's not the same anymore. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. John Moran, out of his situation, is, 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 it was ruined before for what? A picture. Nobody would have known, known, yeah. known about that, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, he also snitched on himself with the live feed of flashing the little gun and shit like that. Like, he, he, yeah, he, 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 he partook in so, and you know what's the crazy thing is like, uh, like he's like like uh, eighth mile with uh, what was the guy Papa Doc? Well, Papa Doc. But he was really like you know private school all this stuff. Like John yeah. Moran's the same kind of situation. But you know, in this society, we all we all have this image thing where it's just like you know what we we want to be these alpha males. We want to be all this tough like yo. And the crazy thing about the game is tough dudes. Don't need you to see that they tough and do all that crazy stuff. They want to get. No. They want to be away from that stuff. They do that tough no. stuff as a means to an end. A lot of times the dudes aren't tough. Do all this fake, flashing stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. You know, it's been a lot of craziness. Let's let's before we start the regular show, let's talk about some crazy stories recently in the news. We talk, you know we'll, we'll go through some crazy stories, have some feedback about okay. that, and then we'll go into our regular scheduled show. First thing I want to talk about is like the wild stuff with the Mexican cartel. Oh yeah, kill Even, those, kill those people, kidnap those people. You know what I mean? What do you think about that? That's unfortunate, but you know what was going on is, see, we live in a generation where cartels didn't do stuff like that. They didn't. They left tourists and stuff around, but the drug game ain't the same no more. So now with these stories, and somebody who might be a local rapper, right? He might be like, "Yo, I'm going to Cancun." He flashed fifteen, twenty thousand. The drug game ain't the same. They like, all right, as soon as he come, touchdown, we getting him. Yeah. See, social media is is doing is doing a lot to hurt people and stuff, and, and it's unfortunate to those families who just went to vacation, whatever, too. But cartels are like, listen, yeah. some of these some of these U.S. might have five, ten grand on them, whatever, too. Forget it. For, we will take their cards or whatever. They're gonna it's charge something. Lit. So now, but they, that was never it before. I've been to Cancun. I've been to places in Mexico with just me and my wife. Literally, we leave the resort and yeah. and and you you cool. Yeah. But now it's like, yeah. you know, because because everything is is not the same. So people's gonna do little petty crimes, yeah. and that that's what's going on. We still don't know all the details because not just of, that, some, but like, just yeah, in some general. Of it, yeah, some of it they were saying they went down there to have a. You know, tummy tuck, and so, so they had cash to pay for the surgery. And then some people yeah, say but, it was a bad, a bad transaction. That, but you know what I'm saying? even though the story, we don't know the hundred, hundred percent facts of the story, right? But if you're going to get a tummy tuck or any of that, a BBL, or whatever, you're gonna have at least ten, fifteen grand on you, right? Mm-hmm. So now cartels is you talking about millions and billions. Mm-hmm. When do when have ever the cartels come from? You're not gonna. Well, you there's know? always this levels. No, there's no, there's le- no, there's levels. There's different levels to cartels, but even those people, they don't mess with tourist people because now you're making it too you're hot. Making it too hot. And then it's too. The yeah, that's what I'm saying. Involved. You're making it too hot. So now you get the the low budget people. That's probably the the, 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 the workers for the cartels, right? Right? Mm-hmm. They like listen. We could get quick. These guys, these people are coming to get their body done. For, they're gonna have at least ten grand on them. You know what I'm saying? Lit. So it's, it's it's but usually it used to be a kidnap and then let go, but they no they body two no people, no so. because now they're like, listen, we need that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the situation is unfortunate because 
I, I don't want to go to Mexico right now for a little while. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, but it's people still going to go because Mexico's cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could go to all different places for a good price, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's also, it's also going gonna, gonna, it's gonna to make people step away from Mexico mm-hmm. a little while, too. Another thing, crazy thing that happened in Mexico with the Sharon Crow Robinson situation where the, the girls went on a girl trip. They beat that girl yeah. to death and just left her there. Yeah. And then... Afterwards, they laughing about what happened to her. And, sh- like, yo, it, it just shows you, like, you know, you got to be careful in the circles that, that you, you, yeah. you travel yeah, in. Yeah. Sometimes you think everyone, you know, loves you or, or people are your people. But, like, sometimes you, you in a den of wolves. You know what I'm saying? You, you might be a target with your own people. Yeah. Because you, jealousy. You're breaking bread with the ops. And the ops is your, is yeah, your, because, your friends. Yeah, because... And jealousy and envy, sometimes they don't show. They're gonna show it to you in a different way. And if you don't catch on, you're not thinking of this person might be your friend twenty, thirty years. You like, you know, I don't see him doing that. But then it'd it be little stuff like that that happen. Like how you go down with somebody and then you laugh, and that means the whole time they didn't they never really liked her. They, didn't he, like you they at never all. liked her. So, so, so it's you just got, unfortunate. You got to be careful in the circles that you run, especially on these travel trips. Yeah. You're leaving the country, and. Don't get it twisted. You want to be able to explore. You want to be able to enjoy your life. But at the same time, you got to be careful who you're rolling with. Yeah, but, and then also, like, you know, you know, I'm, I I can't say that for teenagers and somebody who's, who's young or whatever, too. But when you get older, keep your circle tight, right? Like, you, you got to understand the most, mostly somebody who's older is busy, is going to be working and whatever, too. Like, it's sad to say, but then you also got to be happy. You got also got to select your friends, too. Not saying you can't be friends from a distance, but you also want to hang out with people who's working and have the same kind of goals and aspirations with you so you don't have to run into these little situations where you got to find out, oh, this person's, a, this person's a snake. This girl's this girl been doing this. This person's been doing that. So, you know, you, you want to hang out with somebody who's doing just as good as you or a little bit better. Not saying you cannot hang out with people that's not doing good as you, whatever, too, because everybody goes through highs and lows. But you got to also evaluate to say this, you know, for not no cockiness, both of us, we got, we got, we got, we got a house, we got uh, good foreign cars, we got cars, foreign cars and all this and that, whatever too. You, somebody might envy that, but it ain't nothing big, but you know, we work hard for it, right? Mm-hmm. But you got to also hang out with people that's doing as good as you or even, or a little bit better. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about those situations. That, that's true. And you know, it, you, it's always important to like, like you said, travels in circles of people that, you know, have common goals with you. People that, you know, not to say that you can't be doing better than your friends, but you also got to understand, like, you know, the energy. You yeah. have to be aware of the energy around you because it's, things could turn out unfortunate. Imagine you thinking you're going on a girl's trip with a couple cool girls, it's, you know, five or six girls, and then you don't come back. And then and there's no, there's been no arrest. There's been, like, you know, ongoing investigations and stuff like that, even though they have videos and stuff like that. Nobody's arrested. It, it, and, and, and it further shows yeah. how little yeah. black lives are valued. Yes, yeah, there's no real concern. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. Had that been, you know, someone else go out country kill, FBI would be involved. Yeah, this, it would you know be a whole investigation. It might, even, it might even turn into a Netflix show or some kind of series. Yeah. This is not going to. This is just another... It's hard to say, but this is another African American girl who just got killed. Who was in a situation? That's it. Yeah. All every time that a situation happened on the other end, they turn into a story or a movie. You know, when it when it's a Caucasian, what, or what you call it, they definitely tackle it to oh we could we could make a series out of it or a, a, a special even yeah. a two hour movie, a lifetime movie or something. Yeah. But this is more like, okay, sure he got killed, yeah. and it's sad, but it, it is sad. You know. Um, uh, we can move on to more less, uh, uh, not going to say difficult, but less uh, morbid or, or with less uh, violent outcomes. We could talk about celebrity gossip kind of thing. We'll, okay. we'll get back to the um, Takashi thing, but what do you think about uh, Lori Harvey and Idris Naiman supposed to have broke up? I mean, the whole Lori Harvey situation is this, right? I'm not going to judge her because she's a young, young, young black woman, right? And she's dating, she's figuring out, and and she put it out there like I'm, 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 I'm in the business of having a good time. So if you deal with me, it's not like she's leading these guys on, and these guys are using her for popularity too. 
you got you. It, it's no offense. They have to be. Trust me, because her she her brain. She's listen. Her 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 Instagram and all that. She's, she's big time on Instagram. She's, she has millions of followers. He's a Harvey. Her mm. father, you know, her her father and stuff. What you call it? Her stepfather. Yeah. But it's so they like. You know, Idris Alba, uh, what you call? He could get, he could get a, a girl just as good looking as Lori Harvey. Idris Damon. Ij- right? I said Idris Alba. Idris, you said I mean Idris yeah. Damon. Um, yeah. Snowfall King. That's my yeah. dude right there. Yeah. What you call it? But um, you know, they 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 keep going after her. So what what, what results you gonna get? Somebody who's saying I just want to have a good time. Yeah, my but this is my thing with that. Like you know, I don't really, uh, um, you know, whatever about the breakup, if if it's true or not, and whatever. I just. It's two things with the um, the Lori Harvey thing. One, I I, I don't, I, maybe I'm just desensitized because of all like the Instagram models and things of that nature. Like to me, Lori Harvey is a cute girl, but you see a Lori Harvey in, in Queens, in Brooklyn, like every 20 minutes to me. There's nothing about Lori Harvey that's that tremendous. But you know what? We live in the age of clout and popularity. That like last you said. name. That last name alone. Even the last, even the, even over the last name, I just think you know when when you pop in, you know, in, in the social media environment, in this in in this you know social media world, like people go crazy over you. Like you know the the list of dudes, like you said, yeah, she's messed with Justin Combs, she messed she's with Puffy Combs. Combs, you know what I'm she saying? She with Future. She messed with Michael B. Jordan. Jordan Michael B. Jordan, Jordan was ready to put a ring on it. And she's like, nah, nah slow down. Yeah. I'm still for the streets. Maybe future. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, shout out to her. You know, it, if you could bag him and you could get him, you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. It's, it's, I just don't know why the dudes are going crazy over but, her. But she, but she let it be known, though. She's straight up saying, I'm not ready for nothing serious. She said that already. So if guys keep trying to... Uh, trying to date her on which call boom, especially men that's trying to settle down. She's not the girl that she's trying to settle down. She yeah. put it out there already. Yeah. So when you're hanging out with her and you know and you're just having a good time and you're gonna have good pictures and you're gonna be in the media for a good a good amount of time and getting that attention that you probably want. And I know she was getting love before then, but you know who I blame for making it even worse when Meek said I got Lori Harvey on my wish list. Yeah, that I, was before. Yeah, I, I felt like after that. And maybe maybe and was I'm hot a, at the time. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'm maybe I'm just a hip hop fan. Yeah. And that's what really brought my attention to it. But I felt like after that her stock went even crazier. Yeah, after Meek that. was hot at the time, you know too. He was so, flaming. It, but it, it, it I I we have to talk about um the Jonathan Major situation, but that's a bigger a bigger yeah, conversation. So, so let that. me let me first go to uh a funny story that I saw. Uh you know how they do words on the streets and uh for a while, it was just like, what would you take? A half a million dollars or a dinner with Jay-Z? Oh, yeah, or, I remember. Or uh, $100,000 or, you know, a, a, a meet up with Tyrese. That's not one of them, but the funniest one that I saw recently, I want your feedback on, was there was like $250 from food. St- well, I've seen <laughs> two, $500 from food stamps or Young Jock. And then yesterday, I saw $250 in food stamps or Soulja Boy. And they did 20, 30 people, and everybody said $250 in food stamps. They was like, who the hell is Soldier Boy? I don't care about Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy came back like, yo, F y'all, yo. I got money. Y'all think I'm broke? <laughs> and he did this whole video. He's like, I wouldn't have spent time with y'all anyway. And I was just like, man, people would take any time to tear you down if they could. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, if if you ask me $250 food stamps or... Uh, a dinner with Soldier Boy. I'll do a dinner with Soldier Boy just so me, so that's an engagement that I have with someone in the industry. Maybe, maybe and he, Soldier maybe, Boy's a legend. No, no, in that, terms of that, has his music has his music withheld the, the standard of time? No, his music is not as relevant to he us. He still had hits. Yeah, but we grew up like when Soldier Boy, you know, cranked that and stuff like that, most of the fans of that are now adults and then the music didn't grow up, right? His music didn't grow up like some of the people He had something with French Montana that was, that was a top he, 20 hit. He, he, he had some no, no, no. He still, he still has yeah. music that, that will bubble for a little while. Yeah. But his music didn't grow up. My thing about it is, is as, as, <laughs> as an adult with a job, like, you know what I'm saying? I would still choose a dinner, having dinner with Soldier Boy just so I could like you could you could shit on his music if you want, but his business 
He yeah. stayed relevant. He stayed rich. He had his video game platform. That's what, like all those little things, yeah. things in the nature. He knows how to get to the bag. So I would I would have the dinner with him just to he's, talk he's, about. He's 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 good at marketing. Good at marketing. Yeah, he's a great marketer. Marketing, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like these regular people was like, give me two dollars, two hundred fifty dollars in food sets, and they was just tearing his ass up. You, what what is your take on that? I mean, in terms of what like what what, what people saying about it, or so was Soldier Boy's reaction. Soldier Boy reaction. He's but, immature but, So but, even though he's grown He's always been but, like Volatile Like but, remember him and Kanye West When Kanye West took him off the song And he started flipping yeah, out about yeah. that You know what I mean But what happens is this right Something like that What 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 was What was the end game of, of doing that To Soldier Boy right yeah. Who who sometimes Who's highly medicated on drugs and all that You don't know Like social media is literally killing people In terms of like you know With little memes and stuff like that And what you call it boom. There's, uh, there, That Jordan meme is going to be Jordan for life The crime so, meme yeah, so, so, so it's like I think, I think but, it's at the point where A, a lot of I'm not going to say uh, number wise Right because Jordan's a, 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 a sports icon forever yeah. But I think if you was born in the 90s, right? That means you was born in the 90s and then you grew up in the early 2000s when Jordan yeah. already stopped playing. More people know him. Through the mean. Through the mean. Yes. Yeah. But I was just using that as a, a Number reference. one is his sneakers. And then... and then Number then, two is the mean. And then it's his sports. Yeah. Us older people, we know, 35 and older, we, we remember know him the as legend, a legend. The legend. But well, I think the whole two hundred fifty dollars of food stamp. Those are those are people. That was disrespectful to even do, <laughs> that, is, do that. that. That was disrespectful. But those are people that don't understand what he brought to the game. Like mm -hmm. in terms of this dude was a he was the first NNA YouTube star. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. in terms of taking it that far and. And, and, get, and, and, and he would tell you, I was the first one on YouTube. Yeah. And he'll, he'll post some he kind said, of He said before NBA young boy and on them, what happens is his knowledge alone is going to, even if even if you don't ever become successful as marketing or business, whatever, too, but just getting that knowledge alone will give you a starter kick for something else. Yeah. So if you say you'll take $250, $250 in food stamps instead of getting the knowledge from him, you're a fool. Yeah. It doesn't make any it's, sense. It's just being able to build that relationship. A yeah. lot of times in this world is relationships. Like, yeah. like, would I take a half a million, would I take the relationship with Jay-Z or half a million dollars? I'm going to take a half a million dollars because the only reason why is because I can get, you know, game from Jay-Z and things of that nature and stuff like that, but you still have to have push. Right, yeah. that that half a million dollars is gonna help me make some things happen. You know what I'm saying? Of course. But two hundred fifty dollars in food stamps, come on, come on. That ain't even. Listen, groceries are so high right now and stuff. Whatever, too. You might you might come out with ten items with that two fifty. If that, yeah, you know. What if I'm saying? that, so I mean, don't get it twisted. You could stress two fifty in food stamps, but my, it like, ain't gonna go far. You you're gonna get you're gonna get a chance to get two hundred fifty dollars food stamps so many times. You're not gonna get a lot of chance. But to it have ain't a gonna go that far. Board. Trust me, it ain't yeah. gonna go that far. You might get ten items if that, like ten good items. So so let's 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 roll. Let's spin the block back to the to the Takashi sixty nine thing. So mm -hmm. like, I get it. Takashi sixty nine is a snitch. Yeah. We don't respect snitches in this society. We we all have these feelings of snitches, get stitches, things mm -hmm. of that nature. My thing about the Takashi 69 situation for me was the dude who attacked him, from what I know, it's still early, they have no association with the Train Nine Bloods or whatever. So my thing is, you, you did that to Soldier Boy for clout. I mean, you, did, you used to 69. Sorry. You did that to, um, six nine. to, to 69 for clout. You did that to just like... I, I'm, so they have a video with the guy saying, "Oh, we're gonna be famous now." To me, that's coward because you 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 bullied the dude because you didn't like him, but you have no beef with him. Like the snitches get stitches, yeah. Snitches get stitches because they snitched on you. Yeah. If 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 someone's a snitch, I understand if you choose not to associate with them, be around them, but to go as far as attack him like that. And he had but, nothing to do with but, you. But, it's, but, it's, it's a bully, but, it's coward. But let's talk about it, right? And it's, and and that, that's the scary thing about it is, right? Especially, you know, with this generation, even just being a parent in, in general, right? Because what happens is this is that they, 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 even those guys were three grown men. So they let the internet influence their actions. And, and, I, and I hope they get... Uh, crucify whatever happens to them. They good uh, whatever happens yeah. they deserve, right? Because at the end of the day, is 
this guy's a this guy's an internet king when it comes to antagonizing people. That's mm -hmm. what he does. Yeah. You don't know him in real life. You don't know nothing about him. You don't know his story. You don't know if he's keeping up this just to keep his 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 his, his, his budget going, right? Yeah. But you took the time out because you knew that was gonna get you. Now they're talking. Now we're even having a conversation about these three cowards, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the internet. Yeah. It's it's sad because. He 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 didn't do he didn't say nothing about you. And, and they, he, they they got multiple angles of these guys. And these on dudes camera. are huge. It wasn't like small dudes. These dudes, were, yeah. all these dudes were like two fifty plus. Yeah. What are you really trying to do here? Two two of the dudes they showed they showed the dudes prison pictures and stuff like the dudes was big like like yeah. So my thing is this is it's not like it was until we know that it was like sent out as a kite and what you call it, in jail and jail in jail terms it's like yo somebody send that. What you call? Oh, he he working here. He was saying that go take care of one or two. Yeah. That these those guys are three cowards, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they should get whatever they get whatever deserve. They get five, ten years. They get they should do whatever they deserve, right? Because this guy is just on the internet having fun. Yeah. And then it it when you when you look at people talking on the internet, whatever, it's your idea to say you take the good from the bad. When you just start listening to everything he's saying and say, oh, I hate this person, make it your person vendetta, somebody you don't know. Mm -hmm. You letting something influence you're living it. living in a fantasy yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, these dudes don't have... You don't you're have real in, beef you're living with Takashi 69. You're living in virtual reality, basically. Because yeah. you don't know the guy. I so, think it was a coward act. And I, and I honestly... So you took penitentiary chances to not make money, not you know, not to come up with stuff like that just for clout on the internet? But more of it... Or, or more of, are OGs doing that or clowns doing that? OGs ain't doing that. I know, oh. but it, it, this, it, it'd be different. I would... I would still be equally bothered, but I would have a different perspective if these was 19, 20 years. These, these are grown in their thirties, in their thirties, yeah, thirty and thirty years old and plus. The the pro listen, the problem is this is I don't listen. Do I do I agree with Takashi Six Nine's actions of what he what he's about and all the snitching stuff, whatever? Too the snitching stuff. I don't agree with 100%, but the, 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 his team did some wicked stuff to him too. So it wasn't like they were they were innocent, but. That to be in the he was going to the gym working out and to be in an attack, brutally attack, and then all of a sudden, all right, even if you smacked him one time and that that's what it was and you kept the moving, Takashi got smacked. You guys are putting pain on this man like he like he did something to your daughter, or your kids, or family. Kicking him in the face, yeah, stomping like, him, like, holding him down. They need to get the highest jail sentence is possible. Seriously, because that was a coward act. Yeah. Cause cause all it is 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 a little Mexican kid. And then I'm not trying to base a little Mexican kid talking trash on the internet. Yeah. Everybody talk trash on the internet. My, my thing about that, it sets a dangerous precedent of like, you know, not separating entertainment from real the real world. Next, next you're going to start beating up the bad guys for movies because you didn't like the way the movie ends. Like you're going to beat up the guy who played Thanos because he snapped half <laughs> of the world. You know, it don't work that but way. The internet is the internet is a gift and a curse, right? It can expand you in terms of business and mm -hmm. it can help you be popular, but it also can ruin lives. Yeah. I was watching um I watch other podcasts also cuz it's I think it's good insightful just to just to look at other podcasts too right I was watching R&B Money and Tank I don't know if you ever seen the preacher's wife he did that with um with Latoya Luckett he said till this day there's some women that t attack him he he was her boy. He, I don't know if you if you never seen the preacher's wife. He was her he was her man in the movie, but he was a star and she was a preacher's daughter. Yeah. So whatever. So he started. He was beating on her in the movie, and she was like trying to follow, be on the road with him. He said to this day, he's like, yo, people don't even realize it was just a movie. Yeah. You know, but like that whole situation, I was just making an example and just talking about how dangerous the internet is. But those 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 were three cowards, and and, and it's sad. And and when I was looking at it, I was looking at it, I'm like. I didn't find no no I didn't find nothing that said to me like oh yo he's finally getting his somebody's finally getting to get yeah. back. I looked at those guys like yo you dudes are cowards y'all clowns. The first, me. the first video I saw was a half a video. I seen the whole thing. Yeah, so yeah. the first video I saw was a half a video because first I was just like this might be a publicity stunt, but then I started to see extended videos on how they was kicking him, stomping him in the face and stuff like that, and bleeding. Like, it, it's not fake, and it's like yo. Like, we, we got to be more serious as a society. You got to be able to separate entertainment. Like, if, if it was a bunch of bloods out there that did that, I get it. Because he infiltrated their world. And, like, even though he, he didn't snitch on those bloods, I can understand the relationship. Yeah, he put them on He put them on the radar. Put them on the radar. Yeah. But for him to do these random 
three dudes in Florida. Like I said, we need more details. The, it's not, they're not saying it's gang related. They're not saying it's related to. And his one crime. of them said, I, "Yeah, I want to be famous. I want to be famous too." Like, dog, you a grown man. Like, like you think you think this was gonna make it? All you all you did was cost yourself commissary. That's it. Yeah, That's so, it. It it, it, it made no sense. Some people don't have a lot to lose, but that 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 was crazy. It that made was, no sense. So uh, now we're gonna uh, spin into the Jonathan Major situation, which is. It's fresh, like today's March 26th. We just found this out yesterday, March yeah. 25th, uh, that Jonathan Majors has been arrested for assault, strangulation of a woman. Uh, they said that he had a, a fight with a woman in the cab. The, first off, you know, the accusation that he's um, assaulted this woman, they're not saying it's sexual assault, but just physical assault and then as details became more available they're saying this domestic situation this 30 year woman is a woman who uh he he was in a relationship with it happens so happens that it's a 30 year old white woman and then you know that adds stigma to the situation and yeah uh, now one of the hottest actors in hollywood a young black man and it's, it seems like you know we don't know when all the details settle but it seems like his rise from fame is gonna fall real short. Like he had major roles in the Marvel, the Marvel universe. In, in, the, la in the last year, he was in everything that was big. Yeah, everything you know, that was big. He had two number one movies. Yeah, at the same time. But it's earlier funny. this month, Creed and Ant Man. And, and, and I know what you're gonna say, and I agree. It, it's funny, like you know, especially for uh, for black men, it seems like as soon yeah, as you, soon you hit, hit, the hit the top. Hit your top your ceiling and then like that's what you that's why like this whole situation we got to get the full story of it so yeah. i don't want to talk too crazy about yeah. it but it's but from you know we can have the conversation from no the no yeah that are of course of course we definitely can have the conversation but it's like this man is is super hot right now right you know so it, 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 and who who's who's to know if this wasn't somebody who reached out to the lady that he was dating and telling him oh he's talking to other girls who's to know you so, everything yeah, they, could, they be said, under, they could be under it could be everything could be under the table it was they was in a cab and then on the phone a woman was texting him and then she tried to reach for the phone and like stuff like that and then they started fighting that's that's what the alleged story is we won't know the details until further down the line my thing about it is is like I'm not Dr. Umar but I always feel like, you know what, and, and, you know, I get this, uh, I was having this conversation with someone on social media as well, like, you know, people, people always feel like, oh, when black men are successful, they date outside of their race, they marry outside of their race, and then, you know, these women, you know, don't usually love you, they love your fame, and yeah. then it's easy to take down. I, I combat that with, everyone's allowed to love who they want to love. Yeah. But I also feel like you also got to understand that you have to, um, and, and first, let me, let me backtrack. I do support on, you know, I support when women are assaulted or harassed or sexually assaulted, things, those of that nature. We have to give them the benefit of the doubt that this did happen to them because whenever it's a celebrity, we want them like, I don't know. I don't know that woman who got assaulted, but I know John DeMajor, so I believe him kind of thing. Yeah. And so, until we know the full details, I'm speaking. I'm speaking On the information you got, yeah. The information that I got, yeah. But as successful black men, I, I date who you want to date. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like you also have to understand the culture and the upbringing of the person that you're you're dating. Yeah. I'm not saying that if he was dating a black woman or a Latino woman or things of that nature that, you know, the assault wouldn't have happened. But I also, but you also got to understand, you know, when you're dealing with certain people, you, the consequences of your actions become more dire, mm -hmm. become more extreme, becomes more of a situation where it can be a so downfall. So she, she called the cops on him. She called the cops on him. Okay. Yeah. But, so, she called the cops knowing the intention that I'm not. I don't know the full story. She called the cops, knowing the intention that what, what, what she was going to get out of it. Yeah, they said she had minor injuries and things of that nature. This is the thing that we also got to understand. 
Sometimes they say, oh, she had minor injuries and things of that nature. He really did and stuff like that. Sometimes you're in situations where it's just like, yo, you see you, you see Jonathan Majors. He's huge. He's not a small dude. Nah, yeah. If, if, if a woman starts wilding out, punching you in the face and stuff like that, and then you start to defend yeah. yourself, you All may right. hurt her in the, so, in the defense. And I'm not taking this side. I'm just saying, like, you know, there's certain factors that you got to also realize as well. There's certain scenarios, right? If a woman is reaching for your phone and you're trying to block her from, like, engaging your phone. So, your hand, like, she's trying to reach for your phone and you go, like, with this. And now, all of a sudden, you hit her. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you like, chill. Like, yo, yeah. what you doing? Yeah. And all of a sudden, and then even if you're a guy that got some, uh, that works out or so you might be aggressive, like, yo, what you doing? Yeah. And all of a sudden, that leads to something else. So, I don't know the full details of the story. Yeah. And, but it's just funny how, like, and, and and domestic violence, I don't I, like. I'm I'm yeah. I'm not big on domestic violence at all. Domestic like you know, a hundred percent against it. But it's just funny how like all of a sudden he has all the, these big movies, and then this situation just pop ups like that. And then the lady that he's with, not saying that she didn't get assaulted in the cab, whatever. Too. All of a sudden, she decides to to call the cop. Maybe they was maybe he was calling it quits with her, or they was going through some so, trouble. So, so, this so is, that's I'm why. Glad you so that, that's why I'm I, I want to say that to the table. maybe there was maybe there was he was calling it quits, or they was going through some real trouble in their relationship, and now she feel like she's like I'm not saying it. I'm not putting words in her mouth, and I don't know this lady. Or maybe she's like, fuck it. I'm just going. I'm going to tell the cops that he hit me then. That's that's a, I, I that's don't know. That's I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying that yeah. this is this is something a scenario that could have happened. I'm not that's, sure. That's another factor that celebrity men have to face all the time. Because I'm I'm glad you said that. I was thinking the same thing. And 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 don't get it twisted. I do. We believe don't. We women. do not believe in yeah. that. I do believe women. I do believe like you know if you're assaulted, call the cops. But this this also scenario that you also got to realize like this. Two things. Mm -hmm. If 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 you seen pictures of Jonathan Majors like five seven years ago, mad skinny, nappy hair, awkward looking dude. But you know, once you start to glow up, you got money. You, no homo. You seen his body in Creed. Yeah, the guy's ripped up. The guy's yeah. in great shape. Yeah, he got he got ripped up. He, yeah. he went from a, a, a awkward looking black dude to now he's probably gonna be this well. Before this case, he was probably going to be on the top 10 sexiest men in Hollywood yeah, kind of list. Yeah. So the game changes. So, and I know this sounds wrong, but the caliber of women that he was dating seven years ago to the caliber of women he has access now is completely different. Not the same. So any man, and you know, they, I don't know how long he's been with this girl, but this 30 year old white, white girl, they're saying that, you know, um, he's, he was dealing with her for a little while. The caliber of woman that's coming it at changed. him now it changes. It's and, different. And, still, and I don't know how I don't yeah. know how this I don't know how this woman looks. Yeah. But regular, nobody really know who you are, Jonathan Majors. I'm in Hollywood, but you know, I get roles when I can to the hottest dude on the streets. The caliber of woman coming at you now is crazy. It's a different selection. If if obviously you should be faithful to the partner that you have, but let's keep it a buck. Sometimes when the when people's options change, people interests change. That's a fact. Now we're gonna find out more later, but more details, I, I, yeah. it could be a possibility. That's why I, that's that why, that's that why I mentioned what I mentioned because yeah. I'm what I'm saying is this: I don't know if the relationship was going rocky road due to his newfound celebrity, right? Yeah. Some some women think they could handle it, but when they get out of control, now they're like. I'm going to lose him. I don't know what to do. And I'm not saying that that all played out from the cab incident or the yeah. situation. But it's just what it is. Like, like, look, D-Wade and his wife, when they, when he was in Marquette and everything was good, he first got to the NBA, whatever, too. He started winning them championships. He got to Miami. D-Wade changed. Not saying he, he changed as a parent. But he's, he 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 changed as a man in general because now it's a tension that his value as a man went up. He and became then now he, he, had he became choices. one of his, no, I don't want to say better choices, but now his interest level he changed. He became he became one of the sexiest men in in, in the world at uh, one point. Yeah, uh, at a time, you know. So it's like you went from this this local uh, star in Chicago, what you call it. He wasn't even all American, so you know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you kill in the final four. And you won the best college players, top five, top five, NBA. top five in the NBA, and then you win MVP in the NBA Finals. Now that that lady at home, who's been with you in and out, 
Not to say you don't want to be with her anymore, but the temptation is higher for you now. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and we're not so, saying that... We're not making you're, excuses you're, you're, for it. Excuses for it. But I also think there's also a factor, right? Because that's when, to me, the culture of the person you're dating with and things of that nature. Like, don't get it twisted. You know, a black, a Latino woman who's assaulted will probably feel the kind of... The, the same way probably would call the cops. I just don't know. I need more details. But there's also that factor of if they're saying that it happened because the woman was jealous that yeah that relationship that, like listen that. that relationship probably was rocky road and it was heading towards the end yeah and she said listen you want it, it's not gonna end the way you think it's gonna end mm-hmm. and, and 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 you know I'm pretty sure I'm not a future teller but this is gonna wind up with the no charges filed settle out of court she's gonna want to get a bag on her way out of the relationship so that that way she don't for, leave for, empty-handed. For, for, for stress and all the all the mm-hmm. trauma and you know how it goes. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, we don't know the whole story, but we just, from the information, it looks like that relationship was towards its end and, and, and this was this was That's just a scenario, but yeah. to me it, it just is it's, it's just crazy. But then another twist is now some directors are coming out like, yeah, even from his days back in Yale He's an abuser. He's always been abusive. He talks crazy to people, things of that nature. It's funny. There's just like, you know, people who are closer to the story be like, yeah, I'm glad the world gets to know that he's a terrible person. My thing about it is like, yo, if you felt that that gumption about him, you should have said that two weeks ago. You could have said that before he got all these roles, okay? It, it, it's just that, you know, when one party come out, everybody come out. That's what it is. Yeah. And... You know, it, it's it's a sad situation. Hopefully, he get he get, get cleared up. If this is the nature of who he is and is being exposed, and then and then and then listen, listen. I'm not gonna sit there and play like, oh, hey, he's in something too. Wait, wait. When you get big like that and all that too, you start using substance, okay? Certain substance that because oh. you got to that, that 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 plays a factor too. You might be on steroids. You might be on something that's legal. Right, something that they, they, these um, these producers and saying, "What's well, called? You need to get back big really fast. This movie's coming in six months. To get that form of muscle in that fast, and you haven't been working out in your life whatever too, you're gonna have to put some substance in that body. It ain't regular. Trust me. You could work. I trust me. And I work out. I'm not saying I'm this gym rat, whatever. But what I'm saying is, who knows if this if he, if he is on? I'm not gonna say steroids, but on substances that make him. You know, now, a little more aggressive. If, Who knows? If, if if Who knows? The steroids thing, the aggressive I don't disagree with that. But to me that doesn't give him the pass. No, no, it don't behavior. give him that. If that's if if was if that's the only if he really did it, I'm not gonna give him I'm not saying you are, but I'm not giving him the pass of, you know, Roy Rage or things of that nature. To me, I just feel like the timing of it and maybe maybe sometimes it's just the choices yeah. that's being made, but I always feel like, man, Every time we want to yeah. pick up a, a, you know, a black guy, he becomes the face of a movement. Something crazy. Yeah, happens. it happens. It happens to the best of them. But you know, a lot of times is, you know, you got to be. It's it's sad, but it's 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 it's, it's like you want to enjoy the success. You want to live your life whatever too. But it's like everything you're doing from now going forward, you're gonna be watched. Yeah. You know, you had the big. You had and one of the biggest. Even movies. if he's cleared, right? Yeah, it's, that's still gonna be towards his name. It's still gonna be on his name. One. Two, people are always gonna feel a little salty or throw salt salt on his name. Like you know, like remember the interview Mike Tyson had a couple of years ago, and he's on the interview on a morning show in Canada, and then the guy's gonna say, "Yeah, we have convicted rapist Mike Tyson on the show with us." Like, like dude, like I, I'm doing your show, and and that's how you introduce me. Mike Tyson was about to break his face, but but Mike Tyson like held his composure. But it's just like. The energy that an accusation hits yeah. you with, it's never Bro, going like, to be met with the apology like, or the recorrection. Like um, Gilbert, not to, this is a side note, Gilbert Arenas was talking about um, John Moran, and he was like, you know, you went from the face, almost the face of the NBA, that's what the direction it was trying to give you because LeBron is, on, uh, is, LeBron is out, and they're trying to figure out who's the next one coming. You went from uh, A class to now you're going to be in the C. The C to D. That's that's the category I fell in when when I had the gun situation, right? I'm not, and I was never as high as your situation because I, I played at a time where there was just guys that there, there, there were just guys that, that, that were it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and he said I played in the LeBron James era, but that whole situation that happened to you, whether you you're gonna keep your money and what you go boom, 
your celebrityness is gonna go down yeah. completely. And yeah. and the NBA and he said straight up, he said the NBA is gonna make sure that you're never gonna hit that top spot again. Yeah. And let, you me, know? let me let me tell you another thing about society for men of color and people of color. Everyone likes a redemption story if you're not black. <laughs> Once you're black and the redemption story is yeah. you can get back, you never get back to where you were. Chris Brown, as good as his music has been over the last it 10 gets years. It better and better. We never forget I him. I mean, don't get it twisted. Chris Brown has some questionable actions as well. He'll, he'll never be what he should have been. Chris Brown was on trajectory to be like almost what a Michael Jackson could have been. With yeah. the talent, that being able to act, being able to dance, being able to sing, being able to write, being able to rap. He was a, a superstar on the rise. And don't get it twisted, it's his own dealing with the, the abuse, you know, the, the domestic abuse situation with Rihanna. Rihanna kind of left the situation being seen completely as a victim, him is completely as, as the wrongdoer, and it's never the same. Don't get it twisted. Will Smith is not finished out here, but Will Smith, people are always going to be like, yeah, he's, I'll do something with him, but I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't, Black I don't, men, I don't we don't get the, we don't get that second chance of having the trust of the world. I don't, the, the, he, he's always going to have the asterisk of, you know, he's still Will Smith. And he's an amazing actor, rapper, and he's, he's, he's an all around talent, but people are still going to always have that. I don't know, even know if it's, this is benefit right now, benefit yeah. to me right now. Yeah. He had a movie that and didn't he, do that well because yeah. the situation. And he was already looking bad with the whole simp Jada, Jada thing. And then yeah. he, he took that. And, and what Chris Rock, Chris Rock said was like, everybody called him a bitch. Everybody who's breakfast club, anyone called him a bitch. And who he slaps? Me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I ain't gonna lie, it was a, it could have been a case of misdirecting anger. But to get back to the topic that we're talking about, as black men, you have to be careful of the choices that you make, the associations that you make, and the relationships that you build. I'm not saying that if if the woman who assaulted he he assaulted was a black woman or a Hispanic woman or a woman of the culture more closer to his culture, he wouldn't still be in that same light. Yeah. I, I just feel like you know. How society views you is just like, you know, when you're in those kind of situations and you did that to uh, to a, a young white woman, we're going to find out more. That's the dance on distress. Yeah. There's no one in the country that the world feels more sorry for than a, than a young white woman outside of just children. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it's sad because every time minorities get into situation it stays it stays with them for a long time well, nobody's talking about Brett Favre's situation at all anymore mm -hmm. it's like anytime uh, I'm not a racist I'm just saying anytime anytime a Caucasian person do something in the media it doesn't get spoke about too long unless it's something where they they can't let it go, mm -hmm. go. When you we're know? when we're given an opportunity we gotta feel we gotta be thankful that we got yes, the opportunity yes. we didn't we didn't earn it no we don't deserve it no we got to be thankful of and not course. everybody else gets treated with that same barometer of so course. i'm i'm praying for the young lady involved and i'm hoping that she's not really hurt i'm hoping that everything gets cleared away and if she was a true victim i want justice for her as if i want justice for anyone but if we come to find out that this is a just a he was breaking up with her she knew she was on the way out, and this is the way that I'm like, fellas, you got to be careful with who you associate but with. Is, but the, the, the crazy thing about this is it's like, you know, when when we when you talk about the story and you give the advice, and then you, when you end it, it's two different things. Like, you know, like, you could be in a situation where it's just like you regret it after, but it's like, what, what are you supposed to do? This lady trying to take your phone and you're like, hold on, what's going on here? I don't know if he was cheating. I don't know. This could have just been a business. Like, you know, yeah. somebody reaching out, hey, what's yeah. up? You know, I'm just following up with you. And she just went to, I don't know if she went too far. How it went, You know, you, you, it's easy to say, be careful. But how do you how do you play out in a situation like that? And, and, right? And, and then and, who put it out there? Like, oh, she, oh, oh, she told the cops. I forgot. She yeah, told the yeah, cops. Yeah. This is yeah, another thing. But, I... And, and this is this could be an ignorant take on my part or, or whatever. I think a black girl, a Latina girl who's with Jonathan Majors and she see other women texting him, she gonna be like, yo, don't disrespect me and stuff like that. Maybe if he's dealing with the wrong chick, then chase it out. But I feel like 
a woman of our culture is going to tr- want to protect the bag. You know what she's I'm saying? Gonna be, she's not going to be so... I don't think she's going to be so quick to put him out on front street directly like that in terms of she's going to be more like... She's going to try to get more details of what's going on. And then... Because at the end of the day, is she, she doesn't want to mess up the brand. Period. Right? Mm-hmm. If, she, if you with somebody of his caliber, he's like... He's the it guy right now. So if you mess with somebody that caliber, you're not just going to be so quick to be like, all right, let me tell them and, and let me let me tell the story. So you're right. I, it's 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 a, it's a lot of factors we go on and on about. Yeah. Hopefully, get, the story gets cleared up and his, his name his name and and his name is clear and hopefully, it, you know, we get clarity. That's all. So I'm I'm gonna uh, move on to now the topics of the show, but it was a great you know pre-show. It's a good welcome back to uh, the things that we got going on. Yeah, it was you know hello to all our audience. Hopefully you know the first you know 45 minutes of the show was entertaining, and then now we'll get to the show. Um, the first topic we're gonna talk about is working through cheating, and um, it's funny we're talking about the John Dominion <laughs> possibly yeah. cheating, and um, you know. Another thing, just to uh, piggy finish, piggyback off what we were just talking about, I also feel like, you know, the woman of our culture, black, Latino, or just more closely related culture, I feel like calling the cops is something that we don't do so fast. We do it when it's like, okay, I'm in fear of my life. Yeah, I'm it's getting the out cops. of control, yeah. I feel like in other cultures... Especially when they know they're dealing with a black person, they use the cop as their weapon because they know a lot of times interaction with black men and cops is not going to end well. So I always felt like the reason why I would date the way that I date is because I don't want to date someone who's not from my culture. Who would like me and them having a disagreement, you know, and then they could call the call the cops I, on me. You call the cops on a black man to me, and I'm not like beating your butt. I'm not like you in danger. I feel like you weaponizing you, you weaponizing the police against me, and you don't really value my life. You know, it's crazy. I dated, you know, I dated a lot of white women in colleges and college when I was um, in college, and I never got into a situation where where it even got to the point where I'm like, oh, she don't call the cops. Even even if it's like a argument whatever i never got to a point where like it was a real argument it's more like all right this is the situation how are we gonna deal with it but it would never got to the point where it's like oh let me call the cops on him let me try to ruin you know like yeah. you know so yeah. but let me, let me walk it back sorry so working through cheating right and the reason why this is a topic i, I feel like we have so many stories and 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 and, and you hear especially and, and I'm, I'm not gonna put words in woman's mouth but sometimes you hear coming out of woman's mouth is just like I'll never cheat on a man or I don't believe in cheating I'd rather break up with him and then go figure out what I want to do and then then to cheat on him kind of thing and and um that you know in, in theory and practice that is a very moral thing to do I just feel like you know that's not always the case right uh uh, I don't watch it, but everyone's talking about like BMF and the cheating and yeah, like yeah, Charles yeah. is cheating yeah, yeah. on his wife. Yeah. I, I don't know the show, but but I just feel like in certain relationships, you got too much invested, too much going on to just like, yo, you find out the person cheating and then that destroys your world. Especially, the reason why I said working through cheating, especially like for instance, we're both married so we can speak from a marriage perspective, right? Yeah. If you found out that your wife is cheating right now, I know it's gonna hurt you. I know, I know, I know you, you one of those you're done kind of thing like that. But it would be shocking to you, right? Because you don't, you don't get the vibes and the energy that the person cheating. You yeah. don't get disrespected and feel that way from cheating stuff like that. Yeah. You guys have a beautiful six year old daughter. Yeah. You guys got a home together, married. You know, going on. Nine years, almost. nine years. Yeah, wow, it's yeah. been, it's been nine a while. years, been in so, sixteen years. I say that to say this is just like you know, not to say that if you find out that your wife is cheating that you should take it back, but I just feel like it's a lot invested it, through, through cheating. You so, know what I'm saying? It, so, it, the, the, like, and and I'm not getting a, a pass, or whatever. Too when when you marry and and you got stuff like we got real stuff going on. We have a six year old daughter and stuff. And I'm big on family. Anybody, anybody that know me, if if my family is everything to me, right? So 
you, it's so quick. Yo, the younger me would be like, yo, I'm out, this and that, whatever, too. It's levels to cheating, too, right? Mm -hmm. It's very levels to cheating. Sometimes somebody could be engaging in texting, right? And you're like, damn, this person just... And it could just be straight up texting, right? And then you like... Is it so quick to man like yo? I'm done. So she was texting dude. They was talking wild and crazy, whatever too, right? Even vice versa. A woman could be like, I'm done with them too. When you got kids, when you if you got kids and 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 do do have like stuff together, and 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 the relationship is up and down, whatever too. You might want to go to counseling or therapy before you make that move, right? Mm -hmm. Younger me would be like, man. Fuck that, I'm out. You know what I mean? Mm. I still might have that I'm out attitude, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I I hope it never happens to me, right? But what I'm saying is this. What, when you get older and you start realizing what's important, mm. you got to see where we, where was the missing link at. For me, I feel like, you know, and it's not to my horn. I'm, I'm a pretty stand-up guy when it comes to, like, handling my business with my daughter, with my wife, we do things, we, we do our date nights, we go on trips, we do, you know, I'm very active when it comes to like, even with her, like, I, you know, I, I big her up and stuff, whatever too, like, you know, try to motivate her to be like, oh, you know, let's do this, whatever, whatever too, when she could talk to me about stuff, whatever too, personal and stuff, whatever, vice versa. So the younger me would have been pulled the trigger, probably shot, like shot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's shotgun, boom, it's, it's over. The older me is like, all right, let me step back. Let me see what's going on. What, whatever, two boom. Because my mental got to be right. When mm -hmm. the mental not right, sometimes people make drastic decisions and then they regret it, right? Because yeah. it's not, it's not a lot out here right now. It's that, not a lot that, out here right now. So I, I could sit here and say, and and you laid it out on the table about me. You know what I mean? Or about what, what you call it. I could sit and say that the younger me, I'd pull the trigger and I'd probably get shot. Yeah. The older me, I'm like, all right. Let's see, let me sit back and see what's going on. I still gonna probably pull the trigger because I know my mental. My mental got to be right, right? Yeah. But, but I still got to evaluate some things because I can't just sit there and be like, oh, 16 years down the drain, a six-year-old who I want her to have her mother and father in a stable home. Yeah. Now it's like, all right, I'm coming to pick up Friday and Saturday. Yeah. That I'm not that kind of guy. That's that's why. So that's why I gotta I, I gotta really sit there and evaluate the situation. That that's why this, this topic is is a, is a difficult topic to, a difficult uh, a difficult topic to discuss because you know working through cheating is is something that is it is something you gotta think about when you're invested in a relationship. You have 10, 15 years in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not that simple. Uh -oh. Close the door. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're in the studio. The studio door is open, so we're hearing everybody else's conversation. Yeah, but we got to think about, you know, can you work through cheating, right? Because, you know, every situation is like, all right, it's light. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you found out that a person's been cheating, things of that nature. It's heartbreaking. You know, it hurts your ego. It hurts. It hurts how you feel. You have the relationship with the person. But my thing about it is like, you gotta really think about work, work, work through cheating, right? Because it's just like you know, I always think about where I want to be when Donnell Jones, uh, <laughs> he broke up with, with, with Shorty because he wanted to figure out where she wanted to be. And then when he saw her, when he saw her on a date, he was ready to kill himself. You know, wilding out and stuff like that. But you also gotta understand, working through cheating is like you know, we gotta always understand what was the root cause of the cheating. Was your neglect was what caused the cheating? And it's like, like, like I'm sorry, I gotta keep, keep going. No, so um, did your neglect cause the cheating? Was poor communication the reason why you you had the cheating? You know, was abandonment the reason for the cheating? Was was you fully engaged in the relationship? Like a lot of dudes be like, damn, my shorty cheated on me, and I'm like. Yo, were you taking it? Were you holding it down at home and stuff like that? Like, why you think she cheated? He's like, nah, you know, sex got whack and stuff like that. So I started smashing other chicks and stuff like that. I ain't really feel it at home. It was boring, things of that nature. I'm like, okay, it was boring for you. You don't think it got boring for Shorty too? I'm like, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's different. I'm a man. I'm supposed to do that. I'm like, nah. nah so it's, it's too much. Exp everybody got opportunities. You can't think that so way. So it's a level of cheating, right? Where you're working through whatever too. If it if it if it's a sex department and your lady come to you and say, listen, man, this you know I just wasn't getting what I need at home, whatever too, and it was more like 
she told you straight up that like she 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 just you know she need more whatever and 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 your ego could handle it. Then you ask her what she needed to do. Why why was why why you couldn't have that conversation with me? Like like I said, the texting it's so many levels of cheating when it's a boom. And sometimes guys we can't handle it. We can't mm-hmm. handle it. Women women are supposed to be like oh no, no she's supposed to hold it down and forgive me. But we ain't we ain't we ain't so forgiving when it comes to that, right? Yeah. So you know, communication is key. Like, my marriage is far from perfect at all, perfect at all, whatever, too. But you got to ask certain questions to see what's going on in, in your home. A lot of times, dudes would be thinking that some dudes feel like because they make money, they don't have to ask the question. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the conversation. Mm-hmm. It, it'll be the guy that just, that, that, that cares to tell her every day, hey, you look nice today, whatever, too, boom. Mm-hmm. I seen when you wore that blouse last week, whatever, you put a nice combination of spin to the, to the blazer. Yeah. And you doing everything that's good at home. But the guy just having a full-blown conversation and he's paying attention to her, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, both parties, sometimes people get comfortable. Yeah. You know, sometimes a lady might get cheated on because now she's not dressing up to have sex. She's not wearing lingerie. She's like... All right, yeah. whatever, and and no, no, she could be lazy. Sometimes guys could be like that too. Where way. guys, sometimes guys could be selfish. Where they just want, want what they want, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So all this plays a factor. Communicate. Sometimes, most time people cheat of lack of communication, and also sometimes situation have poor ju- poor judgment. Yeah, and and the reason why we got to think about is it worth working through or not, like. Some sometimes like we we live in a society in a day and age where it's just like yo, we we're quick to like break up institutions, uh, you know, marriage is an institution to me. Like we're quick to break up things of that nature that we've spent so much time building because of frustration and like like you said, cheating could be all different kind of levels. It's just like, are we mature enough to look at what caused the cheating? And address that, or is it easier to just break up? You know what I'm saying? Like like you said, when you have so much invested in a relationship, so much invested in a person, and you didn't get right, and you realize, like, you know what? Could I have contributed better to this relationship? Could I have been more engaged in this relationship? Yeah. Can I have been more engaged yeah. to my partner? You got to swallow, as a man, you got to swallow your pride and try to work through that cheating. It's going to hurt. But at the end of the day, are you willing to give up on what you spent so much building up on because of your ego or because of your pride. Ego, <laughs> ego sometimes I keep you broke and unhappy. Yeah. Broke, unhappy, and unsatisfied completely. And, and, and I, I speak to women too, you like know. like like women and men. We, we, we're both equally guilty for sometimes getting too comfortable in our relationships and deciding that this person is not going anywhere. Or this person know that they got a good thing. No, you have to continue to court your partner because guess what? You you have to continue to feel engaged. You have to continue to feel loved. And I get it. Children come into the equation. Mm-hmm. Work come into the equation. Things of that nature. And, you know, we get tired. Maybe maybe when y'all first started, y'all was getting it in five, six times a week. And now it's like once a week or once every two weeks. I get it. Things happen, people get engaged, people get busy. But at the same time, you can't sit there and not communicate to your partner like, yo, this is what I'm feeling. I'm sorry, but I care about you. Let's let's make efforts on trying to do certain things. Yeah. You have to continue to work because guess what? The cheating option is it's it's readily available for both of us. It's slim. It's not even the reason why I say it's slim is because you might take 14, 15 years of blessing. And decide to call it quits, right? And and, and what's going on out here? You gonna have to learn, learn a whole new person, whole new attitude, whole new this and that, whatever. Too, and that person might cheat on you too. Yeah. After a while, don't get it twisted. You know, we're not cheating. S- we're cheating not- is bad. Yeah. But at the same time, I I feel like you have to weigh cheating with what's coming with the cheating. Yeah. Like I like 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 for instance, like if you feel like you have a the next question is, would you give up on a great partner over infidelity? Is the lack of discretion more the issue than cheating? That that's why it's levels to the cheating. Yeah, thing. it is levels to it. You find out about an indiscretion, but your partner was is such a great partner, and, and and they come to you and y'all talk about it and stuff like that. Don't get it twisted. It still hurts, but it's just like, damn, this person been perfect. We've been rocking for twenty years. I find out some shit happened. Like, am I gonna blow this up or are we gonna talk about it? Versus if 
when your partner wasn't shit anyway, and then you find out they cheated, I get it. You want to be like, yo, I was getting the bare minimum anyway, and then you had the nerves to not be faithful on top of that? I'm out. Oh, yeah, of course. So it's levels so, of it, working through cheating. You it's know? levels to when, it, when, yeah. when do you feel like you can work through it? When do you feel like it's not even worth it? You know what I'm saying? What do you think? It's a tough question. That's a very tough question. I feel like you can work through it if if... If it's something that you know that you lacked on your part, right? And yeah. and, and, and that that is that answer when she tell you or he or she whatever, it gotta be valid and, and it gotta be some some deep inform deep detailed information what what started it, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always a starting point. People don't just some and sometimes stuff a situation happened, but if if you sit there and let that situation happen because something happened over that that was your intention in the first place. Mm -hmm. I listen, there's women that be like, listen, man. You know, thank you for the compliment or whatever to boom or whatever. But I'm respectfully married and, you know, I'm happy at home. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it moving to boom. And the head could be like, damn, this is a good looking brother. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Vice versa. Men too. Men got that temptation. You know what? I'm married. Thank you anyway, whatever too. It got to be, a, it got to be an explanation that's, that, that, that's, that's needed. It can't just be like, nah, I fucked mm -hmm. him. I don't know. Oh, nah, whatever too. That means, so there was something that missing. Yeah. So we gotta have we gotta that's why I say before you before you um decide to out yourself or about the cheating or, or end the relationship, go to therapy to see where, yeah. where 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 was the lack of communication from. I, I think a big issue with the cheating and, and breaking up relationship is the lack of discretion, yeah. right? Like don't get it twisted. I always say like What's yo, your breaking point? Since you asked me that. So that that that's an, that's another thing. I always I always talk about like, you know, um it's one thing where it's just like, damn, I got to play Inspector Gadget. I got to be mad and secure. And then I found out my partner cheating versus just like, damn, I'm coming home. Dude got fucking H-Town knocking boots playing in the background. He banging my shorty in my crib. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that is, to me, that's grounds of breaking. Cause one, there's no, there was no discretion to it. It's mad disrespectful. It's just right on front street. And not, I'm not saying if you a good cheater, then that makes it okay. But where, where was the where was the discretion? Where was the thinking about my partner? And then also was just like you know, what, well, like you said, what drove her to the arms of this person? Yeah, and vice versa. What drove if, that if, man if I, to if that I, person? If I come to find out, she was just like yo. I was telling you, this is the stuff I like. You weren't doing this kind of stuff. You haven't paid attention to me. You made no time for me, this and another. I told you I love you, but you never spent no time with me. You never took me out. You never told me I was pretty. You always was ignoring me, things of that nature. I, I told you I wanted to go do this, and you said no. And I said, let's try to work on this, and you said no. And you always made me feel like I was important, and I was a second option, and then it, I got tired of it. As a man, it's going to still hurt me, but I'm going to be like, damn. She gave me a laundry list of shit that I wasn't doing. And I can honestly tell myself I wasn't doing that whole laundry list. It's still going to hurt. I still might think of leaving. But at the same time, like you said, we got to talk about this. Yeah, it got we need it. to go to counseling. It, we need to go to therapy. Now, if you are A1 dude, you know you are A1 dude. You hold it down. You do the freaky shit like she want. Anytime she asks, if you're not tired and you're able to do it, you do it. Like, you do everything. And she just said, you know what? I was just curious. Then like yo, that that person may be to the sh me for the streets, yeah. and you may have to let them go. That's why you gotta you gotta weigh you the gotta pros and evaluate the, cons. the situation. It's more yeah. like you can't just jump out the field and and, and and say yo it's over, right? The younger me would have been like yeah fuck that I'm good whatever too. The older me like hold on, you know what I'm saying? Like hold on, what I'm really doing? And it's like it's not saying any parties get a pass because nobody get a pass, right? But life changed. Stuff happens. So you got you to tell yourself, what, what, is this relationship really worth staying into it? Or is this like, you know, it was over anyway. I'm good. Mm -hmm. But at least hear somebody get counseling about it. Get a, get, get a second opinion before you make drastic decisions, especially if you got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, listen, no disrespect, but if you just somebody, what you call it, just, just a, you was just around, and, and you, you felt like the relationship was never gonna go anywhere, whatever. Too, take it for what it is. She did, she did what you, you did what you were supposed to do, or she did what she was supposed to do. Yeah. That's different. But, but when they got life involved in it, mm -hmm. it's not that easy. So, so, so let's take it this one step further. What do you think about 
you you rocking with your partner, everything is cool, you know. Think like I'm going on fifteen years. Uh next month will be fifteen years with my wife. Yeah. We would have been gonna be married fourteen years, but we've been together for fifteen years, right? And um, you know, what what how do you handle if you, you you're with your partner, you've been together for a long time, you know, things could be spicy or not, stuff like that, and they come to you and say, Look, I love you. I do want to spend the rest of my life with you, but I'm also kind of confused on, like, you know, what I want to do. I want to kind of see what's out there. Do you mind if I go out and explore what else is out there? And, I, and you could do the same? Like, how do how would you handle that? Mm, I'm not that kind of guy. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not kind of, kind of, kind of guy because... Uh, you're the brain, I, the brain wanders too much, right? Like, mm-hmm. like I'm the type of person. If you, anybody that knows me, I have the same people, same friends. I go to the same places. Like I, like, like it's weird. Like I'll, like I'll switch it up when it comes to stuff like with clo- whatever. But when it's, I, I, I have like, I, I write down stuff. I do, I do the same thing. At least six, seven days a week. Like I, it's nothing. I don't put a twist to it. Mm-hmm. It's nothing exciting. So. And I'm an asker, so I'm not the type of person, you know. I'm gonna ask you like, yo, you, what, what you want me to do? It's nothing wrong with asking to improve. But if you, if she feel like it's just no improvement and she wants to explore at this time in, in the game, that that been on her mindset. You gotta, you gotta let her, you gotta let her explore and tell her, listen, your exploring is not gonna, not gonna equal us being back together. Once you explore, yeah. you exploring for, for what you, what you needed. Yeah. That's it. There's nothing yeah. to talk about. Because once I explore, I'm going all the way. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I'm going all the way. It, yeah. it, I'm going to be a serial killer. I'm so not, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in that business. Yeah. I'm not in the business of doing I, that. To me, honestly, I'm not that, I'm not as open-minded to, to, to explore that. Like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go see what else is out there. Because cause my thing about it is like, yo, so, so you find out that's where you want to be and things of that nature. We're over anyway. So then... What's the, what's the point of doing that? If we can't figure out how to to develop what we want to see in each other, it don't it don't make any sense. I know some people are open; they start having open marriages, they start becoming throbbers with three people. Once you, listen, once you let me nature, tell you something. It's like let it's, me it's tell you something about that open marriage. Once you decide, because it's not gonna be a one way street. Guys always be like, no, nah, she let me bring a, a lady to the table or two. She gonna want that second dick eventually. Promise you, mm-hmm. and, and, and this ain't they, this ain't got nothing to do with your ego. You could be fucking King Kong, the monster. She gonna want that second thing, even if it, even if that whatever too. So she gonna want to because she like nigga, you you get to explore and get what uh, get 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 in where I want to see what another guy could do too to me mm-hmm. and break me break me out. It's gonna hurt you once you start playing those games, them swinger games. It's over. Yeah. Okay, don't even think about it. If if any if. I don't even I don't even recommend men doing that. When men be like, yo, I try to tell my lady bring something to the bedroom. All you doing is bringing yourself distance, and she gonna fuck the up. She gonna fuck somebody else. Mm-hmm. Either you in front of you or behind you. Yeah. Because she's gonna be like, listen, and she's gonna say, you bring this, you bring this to the table. What you thought was you was gonna have your way? I, I promise you, men or women. So if you if you're the type of person that's gonna that's gonna hurt you and you can't handle it. Don't even mention it. Like I never. I listen. I've been married. I've been married nine years. I've been together for sixteen years. I'd never come to my wife and be like, "Oh, let's bring let's bring another lady, a little girl to the table." Up to the reason why is because that I'm gonna open up something that I'm not. First of all, you might not be able to be able to stop because you're gonna like it. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. And who knows? That lady might take your your lady. No, yeah. It becomes side <laughs> yeah. relationships yeah. that happen with yeah. they just, hanging out without you. It's just my, too my, many bad my, my stories. Thing about it is, I never heard a good story from yeah. it. My thing about it is it's just like, yo, you really gotta you really like that new explore what else is out there and stuff like that. You really gotta be able to have that conversation with your partner and kinda make your partner see your needs. And, and your needs evolve over the years, but you have to kind of find that new chick that you're looking for. You got to make your partner into that new chick. You got to tell her like, yo, we used to do A, B, and C. I want to spice things up, and now we got to explore the E, F, right? Because you may find that like I oh what what always made me sober up about like you know really exploring this 
extracurricular life and things of that nature is the show Scandal. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's yeah. sexy. That's a great it's movie. Sexy great show. to run around and sneak and things of that nature. But eventually that second person wants to become full time too. And then you have you have the same problems that you had at home transferred to a new uh, it's a new body. And I said and, and you know, having that new car is cool, but then eventually the new car becomes just like the I mean, other like, car you have. Car, yeah. I'd rather have no car no and rock with the car that I know versus chasing this new car, new exploration, things of that nature. Yeah, and, you, and then yeah. now you got new problems. But you know, it's listen. That the question that you ask, um, just in general, is is a deep question. But you got to be mature enough to handle stuff, situation like that. And and most guys, and I can't say more. I can't be say most guys. Some people just can't handle cheating at all. Mm-hmm. I know some women straight up. It's over. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I wasn't doing that. It's over. Whatever. It's super. I'm not taking no blame for that. And there's some guys that said, "Fuck that." I'm not taking no blame for that either. Yeah. But. When life hits and you got a lot going on, I'm not just saying a regular relationship. I'm talking about kids and this and that. It ain't that easy. You need you need a third party to come in there and dissect what what what, what hit. Yeah. Honestly, and this is no no no. This is not no uh. This is no cocky jam whatever too. If my way was she went on too, I I I had was like let me meet this dude. Cause I know what I bring to the table. You understand? <laughs> no, no. I, I wouldn't even. And I'm not on trying to meet him to, to to fuck him up or do no crazy. I gotta know what 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 did he do that that to to get you to that place, whatever. To mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you know, like I don't I don't know. I'm not even thinking about me to do. I'm just saying in general. Yeah, I'm like yeah. I gotta know. I wouldn't, I, gotta, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to meet dude. Not like meet him, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna. No, no, like, but I I'm trying. I'm, no, I'm, I'm taking what you're saying to me. It's just like you know, it's it's always imaginative to me. Like I feel like if so, for instance, my wife is Puerto Rican, and if if I find out this side dude is this Puerto Rican guy, I'm gonna feel like you know what you he was speaking that Spanish to you. He, he said that fly shit. Like that's where you wanted to be anyway. Yeah, that was that was your comfort zone. So then, go go be where you comfortable at. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, let me, let me tell you something. Even, listen, I'm not even going to lie to you. Even talking about it is dangerous, right? Yeah. That's a day. This is, this is a day. This is, that's a, there's some dangerous questions you're asking right now because it puts you at a space because the brain, you start wondering. Like, what, <laughs> no, no, seriously. You just start wondering what if, like, what's going on? Yeah. And then you, then you ask yourself, like, are you doing everything right? Yeah. Like, you know like, what I'm saying? Like, like for instance, uh, <laughs> this is the last thing I'm going to say the topic, then we'll move to the next topic. Even, for instance, when you're watching TV shows and, and, and like, V, I see a woman or cheating shit. I'm like, damn, she, she put a streets <laughs> and stuff like that. And then your woman defend her action. You're like, Fuck you defending her actions for? That chick is for the streets. Yeah, I mean, Are you uh, telling me you for the streets too? I be watching hood movies sometimes. <laughs> I be going, yeah, I be watching hood movies sometimes. And I'm like, damn, she did that so easy. I'm like, hold on. Like, this is what really, really, really think? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, what used to piss me off is this, this is a show called This Is Us. And then the father died. I know. Don't say that. I'm going to watch it. I've been watching it. It's going to work. This, not, this, it's been a minute, This though. doesn't mess up the whole show. This yeah. is just a, a, a portion of it. The father dies, right? And then his best friends wind up marrying his... his, his the, the father's best friend wind up marrying his wife. Years the down the line, time but still. They on it. Yeah. And then, you know, my wife always says, like, you know what? They found comfort in each other. I said, listen, I don't give a fuck if I'm a ghost. You don't marry none of my best friends. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that. Go find comfort somewhere else. Yeah, but you see, anytime, any, anytime that you find out friends and, and this person break up and they start dating whatever too, you always had that interest in them. You always did. You just didn't cross the line at that time, but there, there was something there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it's just it's not it for eight me. Eight motherfucking, eight billion people in the world, go find somebody but else. But people, a lot of people are lazy. Like yeah, when, that, that close to home listen, shit. Listen, when, when, when it comes to my friends' relationships or this and that, whatever, too, you are the homie, for real, for real. They, they, and I got a friend, he done dated some, you know, mm-hmm. top of the top. He can't tell you one time, yo, your brother, your brother really went hard on this one to, to you know, to whatever. You know, it's just not my style. Even when we was in college, and it's not my style because my thing is this: I value friendships 
and, and, and family, like real vibe, fam, shit, mm-hmm. family. Brother, God tell you, nah, nah, this is my side job. I'm cool. I'm cool. Nah, you just got it. Nah, it it ain't never that. It ain't never that. It, he always gonna feel some kind of way. It don't mean something to them until they, they somebody close to them start looking at them that way. Then yeah. it's just like, all right, it, so this kind of trans, uh, converses, uh, transfers over to our next topic, which is awkward conversations. Are we are we avoid living our best lives with our partners or even friends because we're afraid to have awkward conversations? Like for instance, like you know, sometimes you're with your partner and it's just like you know, like sex or things are awkward or they always doing something you don't like and you know if you bring it up to them it's gonna bother them but at the same time you kind of suffer or if you have a friend that always makes bad decisions and you have to sit there and be like you give them advice and then they keep doing bad situations and like you don't want to upset them but you you, you're watching them kind of go down this bad path because you don't want to have an awkward conversation with them so what do you think about that do you think we could be living better lives if we're truthful with people or or we just kind of just Avoid these awkward conversations. I've done had true true syrup to some some of my people, and I'm not friends with them anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, then, uh, so you think you think is there any correlation with you being I, too real? I'm not just saying it's correlation, but I think the the fact that I gave them that advice, whatever, too, and and see the thing about advice is this, right? You if you give an advice, whatever, too. At least when you have your give advice, have your shit in order. Mm-hmm. I don't want advice when you don't got your shit in order, right? Yeah. Most of the times when I get advice, I get advice from my two older brothers and my sister. They all got their shit in order, right? Yeah. So when they give me advice, most of the time I'm going to listen. Mm-hmm. I'm not listening to person somebody that's not saying that the person I don't got their shit in order because people go through highs and lows. I've been highs and lows. Everybody goes through highs and lows. Yeah. Don't got good advice. But it, it's going to mean more to me when it comes from my family. Yeah. Boom. So now when, when somebody give me a scenario or a story and tell me how to go about it, I talk to my boy every day. Yeah. He, he's doing well for himself. He's, he's up there, whatever, you know, sports, whatever, too. But when I give him advice, he listens to me, but it's not because he's like, oh, whatever, so boom. I never gave him anything that's still wrong. Right, yeah. you understand what it's a boom, and 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 if you talk about levels, he's he's a celebrity kind of. If she's in that kind of world, but it's not like he's like, oh, taking my advice because he needs it. It's yeah. because I always steer him the right way. You understand what I'm saying? So, a lot of the times is you got to be careful what direction and how you lead to that because some people don't want to hear it. Yeah, and you could you could you could know when the person don't want to hear it. Like, yeah. I, I I think you know. It's two different dynamics, but I, I do think sometimes we avoid having the awkward conversations. But to me, I feel like, yo, I'd rather get this conversation out, put it on the table, and then move on. Because it's just like, to me, it's like when you let shit linger, especially with your partner and things of that nature, to me, it's just like, yo, we wasting time. I don't I don't like wasting time where it's just but, like we could be further ahead of time. Let's have the awkward conversation. You tell me like, you know what? Sex is whack because of ABC, or I need you to do this and stuff like that. Is it gonna hurt me? It's gonna be like, damn, okay. But at the same time, you you give somebody something to work towards when it's your partner, even your friends and things of that nature. It's just like, yo, if if I care enough for you to keep you in my circle and keep you around me, I gotta be able to try to talk to you to build you up. Because if I keep you around me just for for me to watch you struggle. You could be my, you could be my downfall, right? I, yeah. I could be letting you around, you know, my inner circle, you know, my in and outs and stuff like that, but I never poured into you. So then now that I'm going places and you not, you're going to yeah. be like, oh, you think he better than me. You could take me down. Yeah. Vice versa with your partner. You, you let your partner continue to like not feed to and pour into you. Just let them waste your time. And then when you decide to move on, they're going to be like, yo, they're going to try to take you down or be like, oh, you messed up. When you could have had the awkward conversation and let them come meet you where you at. Or you may need to have the awkward conversation you know for you to do better. You know right. why? It's, it's easier with friends to be like, you know, like, we're cool. And sometimes in a relationship, you protect that person because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. And that and that and that's where it gets, that's a lot of times where it gets difficult, right? So it's so easy to say on a, on a podcast, right? We two brothers talking like, yo... Yeah, you just tell your partner this, whatever, too. But if you really told your partner, listen, you don't know how to suck dick. Right? Or, or vice versa. She'd be like, well, you're not a great lover like that. This is what you need to do, whatever, too, boom. 
you're gonna be like, fuck you. Like, it's automatic gonna hurt you because you're gonna have some boom. You're not gonna be able to take it. That, it's, it, it. When you bring a third party in, that's why that counseling is key. Counseling, yeah. When is, but, when you bring, no, no, I'm you saying. Gonna, when, let me. Listen, let me I'll, I'll get back to you. How could you go to the concert like, yo, my wife don't know how to suck dick, yo. Talk to her for me. <laughs> like, how no, do you do that? No, no, no. And I'm going to say, you don't go that. That is what you go, boom. You tell the counselor, like, you got certain needs, that, what you call a boom, and you like it a certain way. How do I go about it to explain to my wife this, whatever? Listen, there's always a, a suggestion box, right? Mm-hmm. I think J5 is one of the best best porn stars ever, right? Yeah. If I if I want if I want shit to get real nasty, I'm gonna tell my old uh, my old lady what is listen, go watch her. Right? That's just <laughs> that's just me. That's a right? slippery slope. No, no, I no, what, I, what I'm saying is this. And man, don't take it personal if your lady say do it this way, do it that way, whatever. She cared enough to make you so you make the adjustment, say, Oh, now you're doing your thing now. You mm-hmm. know, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? The energy got to match. I don't care what you say. That bedroom energy ain't gonna, it ain't gonna go too far. My thing is, the, when you don't tell the truth, you wasting each other's time. But relationships are not telling the truth. Half relationships are, are together and they're not telling the truth. If you told your partner everything the truth about them, there would be no relationships. So this is the second question: Do we do we not have the best or most fulfilling sexual relationships because of ego or fear of hurting someone's feelings? Like th- that's what like because to me it's just like fear. yo I know I know the package I'm working with I know the stamina time period that I'm working with you know things of those nature you got to work with your best skill set you can't ask a center to be your best point guard <laughs> yeah you know what but, I'm saying so you got to work with your well, skill set and you got to make sure that your partner is but, cool with your skill set what I'm what I'm saying is this is what what the question is is a lot of times people are afraid to tell them the truth you know mm-hmm. you know. There, there's, there, there's some, there's some men, whatever, and women, right, versus whatever too. They don't want to tell the truth, like damn, like, you know, even now with just if with sex is different, even relationship. Damn, I wish she got a better job by now. I've been holding this nigga down. For, if, if, if your That's lady, real life though. But listen, if your lady came to you, say, I've been holding you down for, all through the relationship. What can if, I do? If, if you get hurt, if you get hurt, and, by, but you know you hurt. There's a difference between. Hurt because it's real versus hurt because it's just like damn out of left field. Sometimes, sometimes your partner tell you something that hurts, but it's real. Like for instance, I even I tell my wife, uh, I'm a diabetic and I I take a medication called Ozempic, and 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 it's a big thing in Hollywood now that people are taking Ozempic to lose weight. People who aren't diabetic will take Ozempic to lose weight. Yeah, and I I take Ozempic. I, I I'm off and on on it, but I took Ozempic, and my wife goes the other day like. Yo, you take Ozempic, but everyone's losing weight on Ozempic, but you ain't losing weight. What's going on? And she was, that's an honest concern thing. Yeah. It, it hurt me. But at the same time, I was just like, yo, is she speaking facts or, or is she just trying to hurt me? And she was speaking facts. Yeah. Outside of taking your medication, you got to eat better. You got to get exercise, you exercise combination yeah, things yeah, of that nature. That but thing. that was her being honest with me that it hurt for a second, but it's real talk. So we got to understand like, do we have these awkward conversations so that we could go forward or, or we hold on to shit Bro. and then be tight for the whole damn a, a lot of times time. relationships, even our marriage, we hold on to stuff because we just don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it, it doesn't, and, and, and I, to say, I say it's going to get better by that. It don't get better by that. What happens is there's some kind of turn oil that hits It's either, like I said, either you go see, make somebody, you go to counseling or then the relationship just hit its plateau. Some relationships just hit its plateau. We so have, I, I, it I, I'm a firm believer of like, you know, don't get it twisted. Not everything that I do that pisses my wife off, she'll tell me. Yeah. But you kind of, you kind of, kind of figure it out. Like, I know I could be more organized. I'm not as organized as she's like a professional organized person. And I'm not and things of that nature. But at the same time, we have awkward, big conversations and get it out the way. And then it's just like, boom. You just drop the bomb, you let it settle, and then you move on. Then letting that shit build. I spent too many years of my beginning of my marriage letting shit build, and then you just realize, like, damn, had we had that awkward conversation three years ago, we'd yeah. be so further ahead. Yeah, yeah. Had those awkward conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, next question is, is it difficult to talk to loved ones about their faults so, so we let them behave in toxic or destructive ways instead of being brutally honest? And that's one thing I can say that I love our family for, it's just like, yo, we'll call each other out when we're doing shit that 
that we're not supposed to be doing. Of course. And in that way, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? My, my, when my sister said this to me years ago, and I always try to work on it. She was like, you're a tomorrow hoe. You always say you're going to do something tomorrow. Stop being a tomorrow hoe and do it now. It's like, damn, you're right. Procrastination will kill you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then even and even Cliff, Cliff will come at me advice. And then I never tell Clifford what he want to hear. I always tell Clifford, this is the other side of what you're looking at. So can you work on the other side? And if not, then go with how you feel. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> it's tough, right? But we, like, as family members, we, we tell each other, like, what it is, whatever, too, boom. But... In relationships, in terms of telling your your significant exactly what what you should be doing and stuff, it, it, you gotta you see the thing about it. You gotta know the who you are dating to. If that person's sensitive, you might have to say it in some kind of way. You know, like listen, you know, I have these awkward situations. You know, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't like some of the. I'm putting it down. Sometimes I don't like doing my wife dress in terms of what she's showing around to. I'm like, listen, man. You married. I don't know what you think you're doing. And that 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 might be somebody that, you know, I don't want I don't even want to go that direction. But I'm saying is this. It's tough to really tell them exactly what it is. But if it's something serious, I'm gonna tell her. Like, yeah. listen, no, this is this is this is what it is. If it's to the point where it's gonna affect me and I feel like it's it's hurting me to that point, I'm gonna sit it down I'm like listen, I'm telling you what it is. I'm dead serious, yeah. you know? My thing about it is the reason why and it took me years to 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 get to the point, but the reason why I don't mind having these awkward conversations is because I'm supposed to pour into my partner. She's supposed to pour into me. Like, don't get it twisted. I'm still fat. I still don't eat everything that I want, but I've made a lot of, I've learned to get rid of a lot of stuff and, and, and I'm much better now. It's because my partner told me like, yo, you bugging out. Like I used to sit, uh, every meal, I would sit down with two of the, uh, remember the Arizona 99 cent cans? Yeah. I would body two of those cans of, of juice with each sugar, meal. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or those big 32 ounce Gatorades. Yeah. I would crush two of those with a meal. Nah. And, and more like, yo, sometimes. you a diabetic. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's just like, you know, even though I'm, uh, you see me drinking alcohol, but this is like a once occasion thing. Yeah, Not drink it, it like sparkling ices. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Water and things Substitute. like that. Yeah, Substitute. Yeah. And I say that to say this, we got to have the awkward conversation with the people that we love. Because if not, that neglect, because we want to make them happy, we're, we're, we're watching them go down paths that may be destructive and not positive to them. And then it's just like, they're still in your life. That's true. But also... You can have the awkward conversation and also protect your feelings at the same time. Don't just be malicious with it, right? Mm -hmm. If if you dating somebody and you might be a gym rat or whatever too, and the other person is not into the gym or whatever too, and you want them to lose weight, or whatever, too, like babe, let's go on some walks or whatever too. Yeah. And if she's like, oh, what you think I'm fat? No, I don't think you're fat, but I I think you should get some exercise. It's seven days and you're not getting no exercise through the week. Yeah, that's something that that I like to do. And whatever too, and, and vice versa. And into your partner. So, so so now we could take walks, and now you could tell me something that I need to do that that you would like to do, whatever too. So you say it in a way where it's like, yeah, I do want you to lose a couple pounds, but then once you this, I don't care what it is. Once you start exercising, this is how this is how working out is. Once you, the days I don't work out, I can eat whatever I want and not feel nothing about it. The day I work out, I have a conscious mind. That's mm -hmm. what working out does to you. You have a conscious mind. Mm -hmm. If I, if you worked out two hours today, automatically your next meal, you're not just gonna be like, yo, damn, yeah, let me let me go get that Big Mac. You go like, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna get some chicken and vegetables. Yeah. It might still be good, but because you're conscious, you're like, listen, I just put in too much work to just put all in. Yeah. So that's what happens with your relationship. Once you make that constant effort of telling the next person, she's gonna want to improve, or he gonna want to improve, right? Mm -hmm. So those are things you you tell them in a way where. It's not, it, it, you're telling them, but you're not being too malicious. You can't just be like, yeah, you fat. <laughs> you, you just walking, you just walking around here, keep, keep reversing outfits and keep hiding in. I see you wearing black all the time, yeah. you, whatever, and be malicious. Like, it's not going to work out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you, especially if you're dating somebody who's sensitive, yeah. right? Because there's one, there's one person in a relationship that's somebody sensitive and there's one person that's tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you got to also protect their feelings. You could tell them the truth, but also protect their feelings and say it in a nice way. Like, my sister's cold-hearted. Sometimes, come on, say, come on, our sister's say some stuff. You be like, 
damn, you just straight up said that? Mm -hmm. But she don't realize what she's saying. You understand no, but, what I'm saying, but, you? But uh, vice versa. You know, there, there's a lot of love in honesty. Honesty. There's just, a lot of yeah, love in honesty. That's true. You know what I'm saying? True. And another thing that, you know, I, I have to uh, communicate is that, like, you know, there's a saying, everything that you want in life is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm. Right? Once you get past what you're afraid of, you could go out to get. And also, I, I think a caveat to that or addendum to that is like growth is on the other side of awkward situations but you get through that awkward situation you get through that ah i didn't want to have that conversation but there's growth that comes for it and if there's not growth after awkward situation then the people involved have to personally work but on you it. but another thing is right to really have them awkward conversations right you can't have the awkward conversation until you fix yourself Mm -hmm. You got to fix yourself first. That's what I learned too. Like a lot of times my, I think I was able to survive my marriage and stuff. Whatever too. You remember when we first started dating, we argue, she argued, I'd argue. I don't do that with her no more. Right. And you know that firsthand. And I'm going to put my relationship in, 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 in front of the street. But like, if she's on, on her, <laughs> on the drive, I just be like, all right, cool. Cause I got to fix myself. If you don't fix yourself first, you can't be in a healthy relationship. And a lot of people are not fixing themselves. They're trying to fix themselves and fix their partner at the same time. Nah. You got to take... That's my why wife, they say on the airplane, if it's going down, put your mask on first and then help wife, the other my person. Wife, I, like, I was doing meditation and yoga even before I had my, my transplant, whatever, too, boom. And that my mind was free. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying to you? So a lot of things that, that was going on, I could be like, man, I'm good. Right, yeah. no, not knowing that I don't know what's my next move or this and that, whatever, too, because you got to fix yourself to be in a healthy relationship. You got to fix yourself first. You can't be in a healthy relationship and not fix yourself because all you're going to do is you're trying to protect everybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. Once you protect yourself and you understand yourself, everything else is going to move forward. And another thing to, to, to jump on what you're saying is you can't expect the person on the other side or the other part of your relationship to make you happy, to make you better. No. It's your own responsibility. Yeah. They can help you, they can pour into you, but you can't be their responsibility. No. You gotta take some accountability, right? Oh, yeah, I can't sit there and say, oh, I'm not losing weight because my wife's not cooking ABC. Your partner will help you in the ways that you can, but you gotta make those choices. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. live and die with the results of your choices. Of course, you, you, gotta, you gotta, listen, evaluation is good with, with, with your partner and, and helping each other out but you gotta fix yourself this I learned that firsthand through my trials and tribulations once I started understanding like this is what I need to do things have gotten a lot better for me mm -hmm. finances this and that I haven't been struggling for a long time because I know I have a game plan and I stick to it mm -hmm. it's not because I have to because this is what made me go next level in being a better person right and I care about, I genuinely care about people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I give people advice and some people will take it as, yo, damn, damn be always looking out. Whatever. Some people are taking that, damn, this man always judging me. What about him? Whatever, this and that, whatever, too. Everybody uh, has got something to prove on. If I'm telling you, it's because I care. Mm -hmm. If I don't care, I don't even have a conversation with you. And that's yeah, just what it is. Facts. But in relationships, you got to fix yourself first. You can't be in a healthy relationship and not yeah, yourself is not fixed. And, uh, you're not whole first. Yeah. So... That, that's going to be the end of the show. We had another topic, marriage as an, un, an out, is marriage an outdated institution, but I would like for us to have women have that conversation. Yeah, 100%. Right? Women and also maybe a single person to have that conversation 100%. as well. So we'll, we'll save that for the next conversation. So um, we'll wrap up this show. This was a very good show, a welcome back show. Yeah, definitely good show. Have definitely you about there, you know, go out, enjoy spring. I hope the conversations we have are conversations that you want to have or conversations like, man, I didn't think about it that way. You know what I'm saying? And to follow up, to just to give my last thoughts and stuff, um, the topics in general is this. Sometimes your relationship is better than what you think. You, for you to think, don't let, don't let, don't let a computer or just just stuff in general, just change your mindset. Fix yourself first and then work on your relationship. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people who've jumped the gun and they're still not happy. They're mm -hmm. doing certain things. They're going to get this. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're still not happy. If you don't fix yourself as a person, you can do everything possible to say, I'm good. You're not really going to be good. Yeah. You're just, you're, you're, you're just going to be struggling in the dark. When nobody sees it, and then you're gonna be putting up a fake mask. To, That's what I'm gonna to say. To piggyback off of what Cliff was saying, and also, like, yo, at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own happiness. 
not the person you with, not your kids, not your friends. You have to be responsible for your own happiness and hold yourself accountable. I think the biggest thing you could do as a person in a relationship is find out what makes you happy. That's a fact. Now, you want to be able to be happy without the expense of the person that you're with, your family, those that you care about. So you want to find happy in a space where you completely meet your needs and you're not taking and draining from other people. That's a fact. So that's the end of our show. Cliff, you want to do any shout outs before we head out? Um, just shout out to all our friends and family that support, support us and keep following the show, Views from the Friend Zone. Um, we don't just talk about just fun topics. We talk about life in general. Like I said, this this last year, uh, March 9th, 2022, I transplanted and I got a new heart. God has blessed me to do amazing things and stuff, what you call it. So I can't sit back there and just be ungrateful and just... All right, forget about it, whatever, too. So I'm, I'm blessed, and I want everybody else to be blessed and just keep move forward. Yeah, so um, that's beautiful. Uh, shout out to everybody who's following us. Shout out for, like, you know, sorry we, we let so many months go without a show. We're definitely going to be more active and more, you know, uh, put out more content. The name of the game is content creation and, and direct to consumer. You know, for a while, I used to dream, like, yo, I wish our podcast could get turned into a radio show that we could do at a radio station, things of that nature. And then you kind of just realize it's like so much saturation, so many other people are doing things. Like you got to just continue to build, work on yourself. Um, I want to shout out to anyone who's interested in podcasts. There's the Black Effect Podcast uh, Festival in Atlanta on April 22nd. I myself will be at that festival. So if you're there and um, I'll be walking around, obviously, uh, if if you feel up to it and you see me come up like yo you from views from the friend zone if you recognize me I'm, i don't think i'm famous that anyone's gonna recognize me but if you're out there you're listening and you do see me and you're just like oh views from the friend zone kind of thing like that please pull up and let's let's yeah. talk like the, the key is like building with people and, and having a conversation and, and having good dialogue and i'm not saying a conversation with me is worth more than five dollars in food stamps or whatever but it's just like <laughs> you know you don't know what kind of rapport and relationship we exactly. can build you know what i'm saying shout out to open shirt poppy he'll be in the next show and like i said reach out to us follow us on instagram you know the podcast is on you know iheart all of the platforms you can find a podcast sort of views from the friend zone and we want to continue to grow and this is just free therapy free perspective of educated black men who's just you know trying to let you know their views that's a fact and we out peace peace Views from the friend zone, it's your time We're giving you real talk, so stay on your grind We're just trying to laugh and have a good time We're dropping them juice so that all our people can shine Views from the friend zone, it's your time We're giving you real talk, so stay on your grind We're just trying to laugh and have a good time We're dropping them juice so that all our people can shine